Welcome back. This is the final uh, video of the walkthrough of how to install a grid and all the stored procedures needed to uh, execute against the grid. Here's my final, well, close to final version. I can add a new record. I can refresh the, the data set. I've got filters as well as uh, sortability. I should have sortability. I don't. It's because I don't have it turned on. <laughs> I'll do that. Um, I can edit a row. I can delete a row. So the CRUD, create, uh, read, update, delete. Create, I can create with new. I can read, obviously, update with edit, delete with delete. First things first, we know how the select works. We already did that. The edit, <clears throat> I have the edit. I also have the edit with the drop down for state with a mass control. I added something else, which is city is a required. City is required. I have a validation on city that it's a required field. I changed over the up the the buttons to images. You notice I have the the cancel and um, update image, as well as the delete image. Okay. First things first. Let's go back out to sample address. The validation that I did. Under the uh, TXT city, red TXT city, I have a required field validator. I called it val city. The control to validate is this control. The error message, cities require. Simple. When the record is posted, it checks to see if the value is valued. I'm sorry, if the, the column is valued. If it isn't, you get the message and it doesn't pass validation. It won't let it pass through without this validation met. There's a couple different uh, out of the box validations, validators that come with ASP. Um, one is the required, one is a range, like if, in other words, if you want it between 1 and 10, and you they entered 11. Um, one's uh, just a plain old regular expressions validator. We'll, we'll definitely talk about that one later. Regular expressions validator would be how you would validate an email address. Okay, so uh, let's look at the back, oh, the, the, the buttons, how we got that working. Under the edit form settings, the button type is image button. That's what makes the check, the cancel and accept check mark show up. The delete button is a new button called, that's uh, a new grid button with a command name of delete. I also have a confirmation thing that says, are you sure you want to delete this? The button type is an image button, which works the same way as this image button. Um, back up here with the edit column. I bet you if I change the button type to image, it will turn into that. It will turn into the, um, looks like the, the, a pencil, if you will. Let's see if that worked. Because before it said edit. So instead of edit, if I want the image to show up. Let's see, before it said edit. I want the little, looks like a pencil to show up. There we go. So the image is there. It's there. Very cool. Okay, so now we'll go back to the the back end of this and look to see what I changed. Needs data source the same, item data balance the same, update command, insert command. Now, what this is, is um, the update and the insert is almost identical as far as what has to be parsed out. The only difference is whether or not um, I, I deal with the address ID column. In the address ID column, has to be set for the update, but it's not expected for the insert. So instead of writing this whole thing twice, I did it once and pass over uh, a, a switch whether or not to look at that I action, whether or not to look at I address. And then down here I say if if you're trying to do an update, call the update. If you're trying to do uh, an insert, call the insert. Now I should probably change this one and two stuff to an enum so they're, it's readable. But either way, so here we are. Uh, the walkthrough for this is I have to parse out each. So so the controls, like the, the text box that's inside that grid, is inside of a grid. I can't uh, reference it directly. I have to do what's called a find control. And then I have to cast that into the control type that it is. Yikes. And then pull back out the the part, the, um, the attribute of the object that I'm looking for. So when I do the e-edit item is the row of the, the uh, grid that I'm editing. Excuse me. 
the control I'm trying to find is that text box. I cast it as a text box. Then I'm looking at this text. I convert it to two string. This ends up being whatever I typed into address line one, and I throw it to this variable. Now, did I have to create a variable for each one of these and cast them just to call this? I guess I couldn't. I could have, in other words, substituted this whole line in for address line one and this whole line in for address line two. It just makes it really easy, easily readable and debuggable debuggable if that's a word. So I parsed out each one of the things and then I call my um, either update or insert. Now down here the delete command uh, I have to do the same thing. I have to parse out the address ID and call the address ID. You know what this this thing is going to bug me so I'm going to take care of that now. That enum that I was talking about under app code I've got a class called enums and I'm going to call another I'm going to create another enum, public enum uh, action, let's call it record action. I think one was update, two was insert. I meant that was supposed to be equal, sorry. Well, since you have to do select, let's call select is equal zero. Cool. So this is a public enum that everybody can use. And we'll go back to here and where we have in action. So in action is going to be, okay. And how do I call this again? Give me a second. I should be able to say that. Let's see. So over an SP address, sample address. Hmm. It's not looking at this class. That's why this enums. So if I go to sample addresses, try this again and say. There we go. Uh, record action. There we go. So the update is going to be case sensitive language. I hate that. Okay. And this is going to be record. Okay. And this guy is going to be looking for, instead of in action, it's going to be looking at well, it's, it's not liking what yeah, it's not liking this to this uh, how about we do this Sorry. Okay, so I'm casting it as an int to match that. Now back to here, if I said if int i action, which is now an int, is equal to record action dot, this one's an insert, I believe. No, this one's an update. Then do this. Cool. This one wants to know if it's an update, and this one's going to be sorry about that, guys. It just bugs me when I see when you see magical ones and twos around. It just it's annoying because you're like, what's a one? What's a two? So I read this and see record action equals record action update. I know what that means. Um. So, cool. Let's show you what it looks like. I closed it. Let me go back in and start the program again. Uh-oh. 
What a mess up. Go to errors. If I if I action, so I'm I'm comparing I action with this. You, you can't. You got to do it like this, and then you got to do it like this. I'm trying to doing something dumb here, but what it's trying to do is compare an enum. What should really happen is this enum should be um, data typed. In other words, it doesn't know that this is an int and a string or whatever. It just is a um, well, let's see what happens. If I build this now. There we go. All right, let's try again. Okay, got three addresses, one, two, three, easy way, four, five, six, hard way, nine, 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 ABC way. If I want to delete one, I click the delete button, it confirms, are you sure you want to do this? I click OK. It calls the delete store procedure, deletes the row, uh, refreshes the grid. If I add a new record, uh, let's say 888, normal way. Townsend, Delaware, 19734. I don't have a zip4. I give it an OK. Inserts the row. If I want to make it inactive, this is a clunky way of doing it. We'll talk about how to do it late, better later. I can do an update. Now, that, that, that updated the whole row. So don't get it wrong that it just figured out the only update action or active. It updated each one of these things. Um, I throw an ASDF for line three. The update works. Very cool. Adding a record works. Updating a record works. Deleting the record works. Selecting the record works. Everything works. Very, very cool. Um, if I were to, if somebody else were to enter a different address a different way, in other words, let's say um, two people have the same record up, somebody entered an address, and I'm looking at the grid, and I don't see the new address entered, I can have an AJAX call that would do a refresh like every so many, so, so often every 10 seconds or so. To ping it to see if I knew it need to paint another record in the grid. Let's see if, if filtering works. If I said easy and I said contains easy, I should only get one record back. Cool. If I want to remove the re the filter, I say remove. Uh, sorting will get back to sorting. I got three minutes. Uh, there's what it is is you got to say allow sorting and then you have to. You, okay. Well, since we're here. See if I can do it in three minutes. Okay, allow sorting equals true. Okay, so allow sorting equals true, but then you also have to tell it the sort column, right? So if I go to address, I'm going to say uh, sort expression equals address line one. So now what should happen is address line one should be a sortable column and as I click address as I click the column header for address line one it should be smart enough to sort it by address line one let's see if that worked so one two three four five six eight 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 that's not a good sign all right so I'm not going to be able to fix it in one minute but that's what should happen I should be able to excuse me click the column header and have it sort ascending or descending. I'm missing a parameter somewhere. No big deal. Um, very good. So this is like a, big, a good um, introduction of how to manually do a grid with template columns, how to manually do or how to do um, the, re the required field validator, how to use the update, insert, and delete commands, how to use the item bound, how to use two different business logic layers, how to use the drop down for state, in other words, the drop down when we're in edit or an insert for state, how to use enums. Excellent. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed the lessons.